Kettle Valley Railway historians have had a tendency in the past to immortalize people like Van Horn, Shaughnessy, J.J. Hill, and Andrew McCullough. To me, however, the real heroes are the working stiffs of the Kettle Valley Railway. These are the geezers that work day and night, freezing or boiling weather, to make sure that the long, heavy freights, or the little locals, or the fancy passenger trains reach their destinations on time. To me, these people are the disappearing ones. And to me, it's very important that the Kettle Valley Railway, or for that matter, what little is left of it, should be a memorial to these working stiffs, these tough, ornery, fun-loving characters. For instance, there was Pony Moore, who went on to his happy hunting grounds when he drowned in his engine at the bottom of the Tullamine River. Coho Joe, who used to stink up the engine cab when he heated up his salmon sandwiches on the niggerhead. Andy Leopold, who not only fixed the tracks, but also ran a trap line in the high Coquihalla. Engineer Henry Lament who broke both of his ankles when he unexpectedly had to jump out of a lady's bedroom window. And then there's the ghosts of the nine young hobos who haunt the tracks near Jessica since the 1926 fiery crash. Han Kwok Lee, the Chinaman, who blew himself to pieces up near Hydraulic Lake. Brakeman Tedding, who fell off the top of a train 200 feet to the bottom of the Myra Canyon. And then there was Economy Charlie, who was a tremendous company man. As a matter of fact, at his very own funeral, he leapt out of the coffin, jumped up, and said, lay off two of the pallbearers. And then there was Hank Swift, who unfortunately got his dolly whacker caught in the drawer in the caboose in Princeton town. Then there was engineer Murdoch McKay, who used to like to stop his train in the snow sheds to make sure that the cold, melting waters landed on the backs of the bindle stiffs who were sunning themselves on the top of the boxcars. Baggageman Jack Clark, who in the middle of the Bud car crash, managed not to spill his shot of rye whiskey. Hundreds of these men spent their entire lives working for the Kettle Valley Railway. To me, they're a disappearing breed, not because they're old, not because they're going to kick the bucket pretty soon, but because of today's railways are totally electronic and computer driven. We don't need these working stiffs anymore. These men who built the rails, ran the trains, and eventually helped make Canada rich. In 1934, the trains ran and I'm chilled to the core. I just kept walking a frozen 